We do not advise that anyone watching this video um, do what is about to be done here. On October 17th, Tristan Roberts, an activist and software engineer, injected himself with a solution that he hoped would modify his genes to cure his HIV. First, I want to dedicate this to all the people who have died while not being able to access treatment, even though those treatments were available. Tristan stopped taking conventional HIV meds two years ago because he hated the side effects. Instead, he tried an experimental gene therapy developed by a startup called Ascendance Biomedical. This therapy that you're injecting yourself with, what is it? How does it work? It's pretty much like a small circular piece of DNA that contains the instructions to create an antibody. They found this antibody being expressed by someone who wasn't taking their medicine. Who's they? NIH researchers. And this antibody, it binds to a part of the virus, and that prevents the virus from being able to latch onto my cells. It's giving my body the instructions on how to do it. So Ascendance found that paper, took that research, how did they do that? It's the internet, right? It's like a lot of this information is becoming publicly available, and this is fueling the, the biohacking revolution. The first round of Tristan's gene therapy didn't work. But instead of going back on his FDA-approved meds, Tristan flew to Jacksonville, Florida, to try a modified dose. Ascendance Biomedical is run by one guy, Aaron Trawick. What's different about Ascendance compared to your typical biomedical company? We work directly with the public and try and maintain a public transparency that is necessary in order to facilitate greater and greater levels of access, both to our compounds as well as to uh, self-experimentation in general. Philosophically, the idea is to get new treatments to people faster than the FDA's approval process allows, because that process, in the view of most biohackers, is slow, expensive, and corrupted by big pharma. Practically, it means Ascendance develops experimental compounds for people who want to be their own guinea pigs. Hello, thank you so much for joining us. Aaron is 28 years old, and he has no training in medicine. But he believes in what he's doing at least enough to test another gene therapy, this one for herpes, on himself at a biohacking conference. So I'll be taking off my pants, and I'm wearing underwear. How is Ascendance Biomedical funded? Where does the money come from? So we are primarily um, self-funded um, by our founders. Uh, I am a majority investor. Are you planning on getting any kind of return on that investment? Of course there's a return on the investment, but it's more a long game than anything else. It's illegal to market something as medicine if it hasn't been approved by the FDA. But lots of chemicals are sold as research compounds, typically for science experiments. And even though companies can't market these for human consumption, legally speaking, people are free to try them on themselves if they want. What's different about what Tristan is doing? Because that's not a normal clinic, clinical trial. There's not that much different what Tristan is doing than what's already legally allowed by the FDA through the FDA's uh, compassionate use programs. It makes sense as a company to provide those therapies to individuals who want to uh, experiment. But just because you can experiment on yourself, does that mean you should? Karen Mashke is a researcher at the Hastings Center, which helped establish the field of bioethics. There were reasons that rules were put in place about which drugs for medical purposes can get on the market. And those rules were put in place because people were harmed by people, many who were lay people, who were concocting potions in their kitchens. And um, even if they weren't harmed, they were spending money on, on products that didn't work. So even if Tristan Roberts mm -hmm. injects himself with this gene therapy and it works, is it good or safe for him to then go promulgating that therapy to well, other people? Well, that's the question. Is the claim that it, that thing you're calling it, actually had the effect that you're seeing? And that's hard to detect with one person. Nobody knows exactly how many biohacking companies there are, but they're out there, sometimes in nondescript strip malls like this one, where Ascendance Biomedical rents space for one of their DIY labs. As lab manager, Ascendance hired Gabriel Lacina, a biohacker with a biology degree from the University of Washington. 
This is all like really basic lab stuff. It's like really straightforward stuff. We've got our mammalian cell incubator here, various devices for spinning things. This cool little guy is totally an airsoft rifle for shooting genetic material into the cells. Okay. This is minus 166. It's totally like a sci-fi movie. And uh, we got like a little back room. This is, this is where I store my nerds. <laughs> Biohacking is just kind of this thing that everybody's decided to use as a rebranding of, I'm doing science and I'm not doing it in a university. But at the end of the day, you're just doing science. Gabe is a diehard believer in open source. He thinks that the fruits of biohacking should be owned by no one and available to everyone for free. One of the sweetest things about open source is if you do good work, people give you money. If somebody does, doesn't want to pay you, also should be okay. Telling somebody that they have to pay you, you're going to be sick unless you have money, is kind of not cool. So we're going to do something cool and we're going to see what happens. That has led to friction between Gabe and Aaron, the CEO. What's your opinion of Aaron and of Ascendance Biomedical? <laughs> um, the boat floats. I'm just not 100% sure about the captain or the crew. The night before Tristan Roberts was supposed to inject himself with the second round of HIV therapy, we met up with the Ascendance Biomedical crew for dinner. It's like you want to make the thing so that everyone owns it and you want to own the thing. No, I want to make the thing so that everybody can benefit from it. Whatever gets it to the most people as quickly as possible and well, actually you know alleviate. The best way to get it to a lot of people, give it away for free. Most and I don't think we've ever seen that open source it. has been able to do that. Oh, wow. Really? Products. Do you want to talk about Linux? Linux? <laughs> or if you give everyone like, the like, entire world access to everything that you're doing, then you leave the door wide open for unsavory and potentially negative players to take that technology and do things that can hurt themselves and that can hurt other people, but ultimately that can hurt the field. Okay, let's say that you, let's say that your treatment works, right, for you. Mm -hmm. Who then has control over that? Well, ultimately it depends on the clinical development and how we're able to partner with nonprofits, NGOs, and hospital networks around the world. He's trying to say he does. The only thing that I'm saying here is that um, it requires a lot of different partnerships outside of our group. And so, are you going to be able to distribute it? Are you going to be the one who negotiates with the governments and the embassies and I've make sure that they can before. actually go into the country? But you are a, assuming You're, executive control. I've not heard any offers to get involved in those processes by anyone else. It's just fun story. Um, just I'll just not, not do lab work. <laughs> Maybe. We're working through it. By the next morning, things between them had gotten even worse. We're here at the lab where the Therapy was supposed to be delivered today. It has not been delivered. We really just don't know what's going to happen. As it turned out, the HIV treatment wasn't ready for testing. And the fight over who should own Ascendance Biomedical's products boiled over. We caught up with Aaron later that day. So, um, what just happened? Gabriel, who served as our lab manager, and Justin, who served as the laboratory technician, have been effectively um, kicked out of the lab space and the locks have been changed. A big part of the mission of Ascendance Biomedical is showing that this kind of research science can happen outside of the conventional institutional structures. I have to be honest, what we've seen so far this week doesn't inspire a ton of confidence. Well, the only way that I ever want the world to see us is as a never-ending fight against these diseases. That night, the CEO carried his lab crew's personal equipment to the curb. And Tristan Roberts was forced to reconsider the merits of Big Pharma. So what do you think this says more broadly about biohacking? It's going to be hard to ever scale it up beyond sort of do-it-yourself kits, where you maybe can do it to one person, but doing it to dozens, hundreds of people, it's always going to require investment. Almost always. Are you going to go back on your antiretroviral medication, do you think? At least for a time. I've been off of it for two years, and it's probably for the best to suppress it for a while. 